Hey guys, this is Slyman. Today is going to be a complete overview on Barlow lenses. So, how Barlow lenses affect a telescope, you know, how they decrease the brightness and how they increase the magnification and what they do to your images and all the effects of it. So, it's going to be um, a total overview of Barlow lenses. So, let's jump right into it. All right, well, to show you uh, how the Barlow lens functions and works, I've decided to use the refractor design uh, to show you how the light moves through the system and then eventually hits the Barlow. But before I do that, I have to stop for a second and give myself some props here. <laughs> I am not a graphic designer at all, uh, but I feel like I did a pretty good job on this refractor. Uh, it took me a while, and I know it's very simple, but hey, I think it looks good. I even got a diagonal on here, an eyepiece. I have a focuser, and I, I feel like I did a good job. So um, we're just gonna assume that this refractor has a 1000 millimeter focal length, and that will you know, make the calculations a little bit easier. And I know uh, refractors don't have you know a conical design here. They usually come out, stop, get a little narrow and stop. But hey, I still feel like I did a good job. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at what the light does through this system. So to keep things simple, we're just going to, you know, ignore the lenses that are found in the objective of the refractor. Uh, so, you know, those could be achromatic or apochromatic. You could have two lenses or three lenses in here. Uh, to keep things simple, though, we're just going to, you know, ignore those and just assume the light comes in and gets bent down to a focal point uh, down here. Now, I removed the diagonal, <laughs> um, but if you were using a diagonal, obviously that light would be, you know, shot up this way, spread out a little bit more, and then focus in an eyepiece. Um, or if you're directly using a camera, go from there. But to keep things simple, we're just gonna just assume this is a very, very simple refractor where the light comes in and it gets bent down um, and, and go from there. So what happens when we put a Barlow lens in the system? Well, a Barlow lens is a concave lens. So, it, you know, concave is on both sides here. And it's what we call a diverging lens. So what happens to the light when it comes down this refractor and hits this uh, this diverging lens, it will spread out the light more. So instead of you know concentrating it down into one spot, it spreads it out and makes it concentrate into one spot further down the, the focal length. So essentially, uh, your Barlow lens will apparently increase your focal length uh, by a factor of two or three, or it depends on you know what kind of lens is used. And if you put a 5x Barlow in your, your system, your apparent focal length will appear to be 5,000 millimeters rather than you know the 1,000 millimeters. And that also increases your focal ratio. Let's say you know this was an F5 telescope. Well, if you put a, a 5x Barlow in the system there, you're going to increase that focal ratio to uh, f25. So you're going to multiply that focal ratio by you know whatever the Barlow lens uh, number is. So if it's 5x Barlow, you just multiply your focal ratio by 5. So what does this do to your image? Well, spreading out that light and not having it you know be so concentrated and spreading it over the sensor or the eyepiece or whatever is naturally going to uh, make it less bright. So it will dim the view. Now here is a closer view of you know what that Barlow lens actually does in terms of spreading out that light. So this line here is where your you know light would be focused if you didn't have the Barlow lens in the system. So if you just ignore the Barlow lens, it just comes right through and focuses down right there. But that Barlow lens will diverge that light and, you know, spread it out. Like I said, it'll make it less bright. Um, the nice thing about modern Barlow lenses is most companies uh, fully multi-coat their Barlow lenses with, you know, either proprietary coatings or, you know, fairly common coatings, but that really helps the brightness issue. And in some Barlow lenses, you can't even tell that it decreases the brightness. So you get that, you know, longer focal length or apparent longer focal length, uh, more magnified images. Uh, in a lot of cases, you get to keep that brightness, which is nice. Uh, the other thing that you kind of have to realize with Barlow lenses is, as this you know light comes in and you know hits different parts on that Barlow lens and is di diverged different amounts, well, the refractive index of each wavelength of light is a little bit different. So if you didn't have a Barlow lens that had those 
those multiple elements in it to fix that, you would get some chromatic aberration. Um, just the way you know lenses work, if light came straight down through the middle, it would basically go right through this lens unaffected. Um, whereas these ones that come down from the side would have to tra travel a further distance to get to that same point. And so, you know, they really wouldn't focus at the same point. So, you know, one color may be in focus where one color is out of focus. And that's why we use multiple lenses to try and correct that so that, you know, all the light focuses at the same point. And in modern Barlow's that are apochromatic or four element, uh, they do a really good job of, you know, fixing those color issues so that they're not even there. The best way to show how optics works though, or Barlow lenses for that matter, is to use real lenses and real lasers, which is really fun. So I have a converging lens here, which is what you would find, you know, on the front of a refractor and a diverging lens. I'm going to show you how these work in real life. So I have a beam of five lasers here and we have our diverging lens or our Barlow lens and a converging lens, which is, you know, normally what you would find on the front end of a refractor. Uh, so what's really neat though is right away when you put in this Barlow lens, you can see that light diverges immediately. So you got the five straight lines, they all diverge exactly how it works in a telescope, which is, is pretty darn cool. Uh, again, you know, that laser that comes through the middle isn't diverged at all and then the further away you get from the middle the more the light diverges so that's kind of you know just how a barlow lens works uh, if you want to see a converging lens so just put that in so when the light comes into the refractor it comes in straight and it gets bent right down to here where all that light converges now what's really cool if i keep my finger right here and then i put this barlow lens in here so right here notice the new point is right here so that light does get diverged um, it gets lengthened so it's an apparent increase in focal length so it's kind of fun to to play with these but you can see it actually does happen and uh, it's pretty cool optics are neat And you know, actually, I'm going to show you what an image would look like without a Barlow lens first to show you kind of the difference. So, uh, again, I'm not the best graphic designer in the world, but hey, I'm pretty proud of my little Jupiter. <laughs> I even put a little shadow on it here. Uh, but with, you know, a normal uh, telescope, it could be a refractor, Schmidt cast grain, whatever. If you're looking at the planet, um, you know, you get a nice uh, bright image. You know, moon's typically visible depending on the telescope. Uh, great red spots and banding. Um, so this is kind of your, your typical view without a Barlow lens. Now, uh, when you switch over to a Barlow lens, let's just say that you're using the exact same equipment. All you did was put in a Barlow lens. Then this is what you would expect to see. Now, what's kind of fun about this is I took the previous image and assumed you were using a 2x Barlow lens, and so I magnified it exactly how a 2x Barlow lens would. So, obviously, you get this uh, lot bigger of an image, um, exactly, you know, two times longer of a focal length. Uh, but what you really notice is the brightness went down a little bit, and the focus is... Uh, just not quite there like the other image and this is one aspect of Barlow lens I haven't mentioned yet is when you you know increase that magnification it's a lot more difficult to get a really crisp focus and a lot of that kind of has to do with the telescope um, a lot of people will uh, you know use Barlow lenses in their telescope for visual use that they really shouldn't be um, you know the really small uh, almost department store like Newtonians will often come with like a six millimeter eyepiece and a 3x Barlow and you put those in and you literally cannot see like anything. <laughs> uh, and so uh, the bigger, you know, the aperture of the telescope or the diameter of the telescope, the more resolution it has. So bigger telescopes can handle, you know, that increase of magnification a lot better than, than the really small ones. Uh, another uh, factor that goes into how well a Barlow lens will perform is the sky conditions. So if you know the sky isn't very transparent for the evening and you just don't have great conditions, 
uh, it will be even more difficult to get a nice, crisp, contrasty view of you know a planet or whatever you're looking at. So moving away from my graphic design skills, <laughs> this is a, a real image of Jupiter that I took with a one-shot color camera quite a while ago. It's not you know the greatest image or anything like that. Um, in fact, this is one that I took when I was first starting out, but it, it illustrates what Barlow lenses can do a little bit. So this is without a Barlow lens, and uh, you got four four moons in the image and Jupiter itself. Again, not the greatest image, but at least uh, it's a base for what we're doing here. So um, this is just a, a shot of Jupiter without a Barlow lens. Now moving over to the Barlow lens. So this image of Jupiter was shot using the same telescope and the same camera, but using a 3x Barlow lens. And you can immediately tell that the night was better just because, well, for using a Barlow lens, the focus isn't terribly bad. I mean, it's nothing special. Uh, you can get the banding here. You still see the great red spot. So it's a decent image. It's, you know, nothing great, though. Uh, but what's really nice is you still notice the brightness is there. Why? Well, like we said earlier, modern Barlow lenses with their multi-coatings really help on the brightness issue. So they really compensate for that. But the other nice thing is in your camera hardware or the software that you use, you really can pull out some brightness and some details after you've acquired the images. So that's what's really nice about using Barlow lenses for astrophotography now, specifically planetary imaging, is you don't really have to worry so much about the brightness as you did before because you can kind of, you know, touch it up how you want after you're done acquiring your images, which makes things really convenient. Another really cool thing that you can do with Barlow lenses is you can use them to slow down really fast telescopes. So if you have eyepieces that, you know, can't handle fast telescopes very well and you get a lot of coma at the edges, uh, you can always use a Barlow lens to slow them down. So this is a Celestron C6N. It's an F Five Newtonian telescope. So if you use, you know, just fair quality eyepieces in this, you're going to get some coma towards the edges of your field of view. Uh, but if you throw in a 2x Barlow, you will make it an f10 focal ratio telescope, and a lot of those aberrations that you see through the eyepiece won't be as bad. So you can actually use Barlow lenses, you know, to slow down your telescope so that you get a more crisp and better view out of it. Even though we do have all those, you know, modern coatings that make images a lot more bright, um, I do think it's important to show you the difference between uh, an image that was taken with a Barlow lens and without. So this image here was taken without a Barlow lens. Uh, this was shot using a Canon T3i on a Celestron 8-inch uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And it was shot at ISO 800 and 1 hundredth of a second. So you see, you know, a pretty mountainside picture here. Uh, you got a nice blue sky, uh, pine trees, snow everywhere, nice shadows being cast. Uh, so just, you know, a fairly typical picture, um, basically using the schmidt grain as a spotting scope, I guess you could say. But pay particular attention to the center here where these trees are and this little small tree here. So look what happens when I put in a Celestron Luminos 2.5x Barlow lens. And keep in mind, the Luminos Barlow lens is fully multi-coated. Bam, look at that difference. It's a major difference. It's the same camera, same settings, taken, you know, 30 seconds apart, but the brightness is much less. And so, you know, we can talk about multi-coatings and using hardware to increase our brightness all we want, but when it comes to unedited images, you simply cannot beat the laws of physics. A Barlow lens will make your image less bright. That's just how it is. Flipping back and forth between the two is actually kind of fun too, because you can see not only the difference in brightness, but the difference in sharpness of the focus. So this you know, pretty mountainside view is a little bit more sharp than the view that you get through the Barlow lens, but not by much, which goes to show, you know, that the seeing was pretty good. Obviously, I wasn't looking through too much atmosphere and the Barlow lens is of decent quality as well. So it's kind of fun to just flip between those those images and just see the difference in brightness and feel the view. It's it's quite a difference. But to really understand how Barlow lenses works, it helps to look at it mathematically. Uh, and it's actually kind of fun too. 
So remember, to increase the magnification of an image, the Barlow lens has to spread the light out over the sensor, right? So this image was, you know, 1 hundredth of a second of an exposure, which I mentioned. So how long would I have to expose for to brighten it up? Well, the answer is four times. And think about it, this was a 2.5x Barlow lens. So I took a 1 400th of a second exposure here. For calculation ease, let's just assume the Barlow lens was 2x instead of 2.5. So we'll just round it down. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So the radius is squared. So in this previous image, when I put the Barlow lens in the system, I doubled the magnification, right? But I also, in doing so, made the radius half of what it was. Well, what is one half squared? It's one quarter. So this image is receiving one quarter of the photons that it originally was without the Barlow lens. So if it's only getting a quarter of the photons that it was getting to get it brighter, how long do I need to expose for? Well, I need to expose four times as long, right? One quarter times four is one. And that's exactly what I did. I exposed for four times longer, and voila, the image is bright again. So to illustrate the math and make it a little bit more clear, imagine you were taking an image of an object uh, using one second exposures and no Barlow lens. And then, you know, let's say you wanted to use a 2x Barlow lens. Well, if you're going to use a 2x Barlow lens, how much longer would you need to expose to get the same amount of light? Well, remember that the radius is cut in half when you use a 2x Barlow lens. So the radius is one half, but the radius is squared. So you square that, and that's equal to one fourth. So a 2x Barlow is going to only be picking up a quarter of the amount of light that the one second exposure is with no Barlow. So to get the same amount of light, you'd have to expose for four seconds. 3x Barlow, same situation. So, you know, uh, 3x Barlow, your radius is going to be a third of what it was, but it's going to be squared because that's how the area works. So that's one ninth. So you would need to take nine second exposures using a 3x Barlow to get the same amount of light that the one second exposure is. 4x Barlow, well, you can just do the same thing. One fourth squared is equal to 1 16th. So you'd need 16 second exposures. And 5x Barlow, the same thing. One fifth the radius, square that equals one twenty fifth. So you'd need 25 second exposures. So that is primarily the reason why people don't use Barlow lenses for long exposure deep sky astrophotography because it would take forever to get the same amount of light. So for example, if you took a one minute exposure with no Barlow lens and Let's say you wanted to use a 4x Barlow lens. Well, to get the same amount of light, you'd have to take a 16 minute exposure. That's not realistic. <laughs> so that's why you know most people are not gonna use a Barlow lens at all for deep sky imaging because the exposure times would have to be so much longer. So that's why people primarily use Barlow lenses to image or view the planets and the moon because those objects are so bright that when you use a Barlow lens, you really can't even tell that the brightness drops at all, which is really nice and convenient. So, you know, if you were imaging Jupiter and you wanted to use one two thousandth of a second exposure, and then you said, hey, I want to use a 2x Barlow lens. Well, on a 2x Barlow lens, you just multiply that by four, and to get the same amount of light, you'd only take one five hundredth of a second exposure. Those two numbers aren't terribly different, so, hence why Barlow lenses are really useful on the planets. All right, well that is the ins and outs of Barlow lenses and how they function. So I hope you uh, found this video helpful and that you learned something. And also, if you are, you know, interested in how focal reducers function and their total overview, I've actually made a video on focal reducers. You can find that by clicking here. Just a fair warning though, 
uh, I mispronounced the word vignetting about 50 times. <laughs> so if you can handle that, go for it. Uh, but anyways, I again, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and clear skies.